next two slides, please. You should be on ten. In the, Indian, in the Indian market, we did an overview. We tried to figure out the perspective in India, you know, opportunities and threats to Obong Pan, and then we looked, we focused on recommendations. Now, I'm taking you back to our initial thoughts in about 07. So, you know, everybody knows the spin in the sense that, you know, uh, this market for us fits within the largest segment of disposable income spending, food and beverage, at the highest levels, SEC, A1, A2, B1. Steady growth in the segment. Uh, you should know that organized restaurants in India is about 2%. Now, to give a perspective on that, organized restaurants in the U.S. is over 50%. So you're talking about a market that is very, very immature. And we figured this out well before we got into it. Even though it's immature, and, and we're starting at such a low base, it's growing exponentially. We have the opportunity that we either, we have to grow and grow, and grow properly and it's that push me, pull me situation. We can't grow too fast, but as the economy goes, we can't grow fast enough. And convincing my executive on going to India, I told them we'd never catch up, so we may as well just get going. And uh, when you go to India, once you've got a proven entity, now we're at a stage where they just want us to go faster. And you know, all the things that you learn going into it don't change. And going forward, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, you have to double down and double down and, and reinvest. Um, as a man for a convenience that made eating easy, uh, kind of developing the normal routines, my, my industry experience, both here and in Canada, started in the 60s. And when I look at where the industry was in the 60s, in the sense that people didn't go and have breakfast at work, they didn't get their coffee at work, they, uh, they went out for an eating occasion as a special event. And then I looked at the marketplace, I can draw direct parallels to assist your, uh, the, the uh, experiences we had here in the West to what's going on now in India. The difference will be, what took 50 years in the West is gonna take about 10 years in India. They move very, very quickly. Uh, we talked about globalization of Indian food, which reflected well on that. And we talked about other companies, CCD, Barista, McDonald's, and, and where they're located and how they're used, an inordinate amount of information. Then we talked about um, competitors, their locations, their product mix, their ambience, and how to establish ourselves in that mar market and differentiate. Next slide, please. Be 12. Um, Indians are looking for, and, and one of the presenters today uh, said it quite clearly, made in America. It, it certainly resonates with people. They, uh, they look at it uh, very favorably, um, and especially the youth. Uh, today, 65% of the population is under 30. Um, that is inordinately youthful. Unbelievably useful. Um, we've been seeing growth of 18% for the past three years, and of course, 18% growth in GDP or higher. Uh, again, we're up at the top end of the social economic scale, but by the same token, we're working very hard to meet the middle class so that as they grow, they grow into us. Um, you know, a meeting place we identified that we had. have. And India is a uh, coffee market holds a potential for 5,000 cafes in the next five years. Um, th those are very tall numbers. Uh, our, our first number centers more about 10% of that, about 500. Next, please, 13. Uh, we want to create a destination for dining. It, you know, uh, in this uh, research, we said 50% of the population is under 25. Again, very young. No international, organized international players. When I think of our competitive set, um, we operate here in in um, in New York, and we have 20 direct competitors in our market. And in India, we have like five. Okay, it's it, five organs. Now, the one other thing that we discovered very early is remember 
98% is unorganized, but they're still there. Okay, they compete, and they've been in the market a thousand years, and you have to be aware of those types of things. Um, we, we talked about sourcing, we talked about uh, a, bro a booming organized retail industry, eating out uh, the stylized international brand, and how it's involved, and um, at the time, and that this is 07, 08, Starbucks had to negotiate them, and we were concerned about not getting in the market first. Frankly, that didn't work out so well for them, so we did get in, I'm very pleased with that. Um, you know, when you think of the market, very price sensitive. I talk about fast moving consumer goods, and you really have to be aware of the touch points, not only in localizing your menu, but pricing your menu, and, and making sure you can draw people in. The presenters today talked about how savvy uh, Indians are with, uh, with not only negotiating, but also with their money. They don't part with their money easily. And you have to convince them to do it, you have to convince them to do it over and over again. We do get a preponderance of young people. Our first location was at ITPL in uh, Bangalore, that's an international tech park. And if nationally, 65% of the population is under 30 at ITPL, 80% is under 30. They're all very young engineers. Um, you know, the, uh, the cafe concept in India does relate to um, uh, beverage, the beverage industry. One of the things that's beginning to emerge and that dovetails with our positioning here in the United States is health and nutrition. One of the things that we're able to do is we are currently, so after 18 months, we're already in two hospitals and we have three more lined up. And it's because of our health halo and nutrition halo that we're able to do that. And of course, you get the pizzazz of being new in the Indian market.